Welcome to the Stronger, Fitter, Happier podcast. I'm your host, Vin, and today I have an absolute banger for you. So what we talk about on this episode is how to stay in a calorie deficit. So if you're someone who's trying to lose weight, you know what to do, but you just struggle to implement it and take action, then this is an episode you don't want to miss out on. Have a listen and let us know what you think. What is going on in your lives at the moment? What are you guys up to? Well, working from home still, hopefully (laughs) not for too much longer, because we had the news that um, hopefully gyms can reopen soon. Um, Yeah, and apart from that, not much really. Like life's a bit, not much going on. (laughs) Sounds really boring, doesn't it? What do you do? Go on, Nikhil. No, I was just saying it would be nice to have something to look forward to, like small stuff. Like we were just talking off before we started recording, like uh, going to the gym, like going out for a meal and stuff like that. Little things like that. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Um, there's like I've I've um, come up with this thing that I'm going to be doing every week. It, oh, I can't even say it. I don't know why I brought it up because it's. So if he's, my partner's in the other room, so she'll hear what I'm about to say. But basically, every week I'm going to try and do something like a, a date night. We can't really go out anyway, even if restaurants were open. So I'm trying to do something special. Annoyingly, I can't say it on the podcast because she'll hear it. But um, on the next podcast, I'll say. <laughs> but yeah, so it's something like every week to kind of look forward to or do something. That's nice. Yeah. And I guess um, at the moment, it's things like, <laughs> I guess, watching a movie at night. Well, maybe not for you two, but, like, um, for me at the moment, mm. like, things aside from, like, you know, going out for a walk or a workout or doing stuff that I enjoy for work or whatever and spending time with my kids and that um, and partner, it's, like, spending time together alone away from children. Mm. So, yeah. at night when they're asleep, getting chill out time, like, watching TV or watching a movie or something like that is yeah. the enjoyable thing to look forward to i guess to what you watching at the mind. moment um we started watching the new power power book two. Oh yeah um so that that's pretty decent actually it's, it's better than the so far it's better than the, the last season oh mm. good uh, everyone's so. watching the crown at the moment i yeah. watched a few episodes of, i've watched a few episodes of it it's good it, what's it like it's good really it's, mm. yeah <laughs> I'm not too sure. The other one is the Queen uh, Queen's Gambit or something. Everyone yeah, keeps saying the about Queen's Gambit that's was supposed- really good. Yeah, yeah. I need to check it out because looking at it, it doesn't look like my cup of tea, but I might give it's, it a go. It's it's about chess. I mean, it doesn't like I didn't even. My partner just put it on. She, she said, "Oh, like let's just." She she said, "This looks good. Let's put it on." I didn't even know what it was about. So when I was mm. watching, I was like, "Oh, where's this gonna go?" Like, it keeps making you want to watch. But is, yeah, it, the is whole it like about chess but it's not about chess in sense that's like that's like the thing but it's not like it's about the it, person's story right yeah it's the person's yeah. story but the person's story is related to playing chess ah. but um yeah it's interesting it's only one season so it's a limited series because i think it's yeah. i think it's based on a true story an actual okay. person i think one I'm more netflix sure. recommendation have you guys seen the rubik's cube documentary on, ne- on netflix no what are you talking about Ooh, it's good it's good <laughs> It's really good. It's it's basically about kids and people that do Rubik's cubes, but like as championship level, and yeah, it's really good. It just it's like the story of two boys who are really good, and one of them is actually autistic, oh, okay. um, and he's the world champion. So yeah, it's really nice. It's it's a good documentary. Mm. Interesting. Netflix mm. at the moment is the highlight of my week. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very good. I <laughs> know, <laughs> I know. That's what I look forward to. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We've got to get Sadie a new hobby. <laughs> well yeah, hopefully when we can. <laughs> <laughs> you can start um doing stuff during lockdown at home. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So um there is a, actually a series that will probably segue into today's topic very well actually i don't know if you two are watching it's something i used to watch every single year but this year or for the past few years i haven't watched it because i don't watch it live um and it is i'm a celebrity get me out of here Mm -hmm. yes so you guys watching that 
I'm yeah. watching it loosely. My family watch it and then I'm, I'll hang around for like maybe the first half an hour or so, but then I usually get to bed before it mm. finishes. But yeah, I am watching it like loosely. I, yeah, I roughly know what's it. going on. It's yeah, Sadie, the same. You, you used to, l- well, we all used to love that program at your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny though, since they've changed it from the jungle into the castle, it's not the same. Is it not, you know it's not, not good? It, do you know what? Like, I'm not, I'm watching it a bit like you, Nicole. Like, I'm not watching it every day. I'm a bit like, I'm loosely watching it. Like, I like to watch the live trials and stuff like that. But um, apart from that, it's a bit boring. It's a good lineup, <laughs> though, isn't it? Like, Mo Farah, Alfie from yeah. EastEnders. I, I like the people that they've got on it. Well, those are the two that I only really, really know. Yeah. For anyone listening um, who doesn't know what the hell we're talking about, we're talking about a series or like, it's a bit like a, a trash TV. Show. Yeah, yeah trash TV, reality show with celebrities um, and you watch them, they live in like a space in a jungle, normally now they're in a castle because of lockdown, um, in, because of coronavirus, sorry, normally in Australia in the bush. Now it's in Wales. Now it's in Wales, <laughs> um, in a castle somewhere um, and they do loads of challenges that they, they have to basically survive in a, in a gritty <laughs> environment. Um, and just kind of be one with nature and a few other obstacles mm. in place. Um, and it, it's just a bit of a guilty pleasure, I think, for people in the UK. Um, and yeah, I think it's one of those shows that I watch. I hate reality TV. Like, well, I don't hate it. I just, I hate that I like it. <laughs> it's so one of the better ones, though, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah, one of the it's, better reality shows. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's a better yeah. reality show, but it's also a waste of time. Like you're not gaining much from it. Like you know when you watch yeah. like certain um, series and things like that. There's a lot of entertainment, <laughs> but there's also you, you almost learn some things. You know, there's mm. creativity. There's like there's other things that you're getting from it aside from just being entertained. Whereas with reality TV, it's literally pure pastime, isn't it? Mm. Um, but this pastime was actually a bit of a fun and interesting one, um, I guess, out of all the other ones anyway. So, one thing that they do on the show that always actually increases our reach on Google and um, our performance on one blog that I wrote was the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here diet. So I don't know what their diet is like this year because I haven't been watching it. But normally when they're in the jungle, they have a, a diet that contains rice and beans. And so that's a staple. Yeah, so they same get thing. rice and beans. So all they get. And then they have to do trials and challenges and things like that to gain more food for the, the camp. And that's... Is that the purpose of the show, I guess? And there's one winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Basically yeah, to basically. get food every night and survive. Mm. But what happens is... Loads of people, well, all the celebrities who join tend to lose loads and loads and loads of weight um, because they're on a rice and beans diet. And what happens is every year people are inspired by this weight loss because it is a ridiculous amount of mm. weight that people shed. And you see it because you're watching someone for how many weeks is a show going on? Three for? weeks, isn't it? Three weeks. Yeah. So over three weeks, you literally see people melt fat off their body. Mm. They become very slim compared to when they go in. Mm. And um, so it, obviously it makes people want to find out like how did they lose all this weight? How do they do it? So I wrote a blog post on how to do the I'm a celebrity get me out of here diet. And it performs er- pretty well every single time I'm a celebrity is on. People log on to the, they search it on Google and I'll put our, our website comes up. So I won't, you know, make you go re- read the post. I'll just give you a summary of what it is because I can literally summarize the whole short article that I wrote in one sentence. It's not the rice and beans that make them lose weight. So you don't need to eat. It's the calorie restriction. So what happens is they're obviously eating a normal diet before the jungle or the castle this year. They go in, then they're restricted to rice and beans and maybe some luxuries. But what happens is they, I think they eat two meals a day or three meals a day. I was going to ask, is it literally rice and beans? Like, that's it. There's yeah, no that's sort of it, like that's it. breakfast, Ration like porridge. portion no. No, of rice and beans for three meals if they don't win any extra food. Okay. Yeah. And, and the portions are small. Small, yeah. So what happens is they're like eating like most days around i don't know probably a thousand calories a day so by default what do you what do you think it is yeah it's it's probably about a thousand calories a day 
they have to keep the, it their has to, yeah, and stuff yeah and it has to be at a safe level okay. but you know that restricting your calories for three weeks to that level is not going to have a very negative effect on your your health no. mm. you're just going to lose weight very quickly yeah. so that's that's all it is it's they restrict calories they eat less than they did before they're they're still moving quite a decent amount i mean not ridiculous amounts because they're just in the camp but they some of them are still exercising some of them are still walking around yeah most of them are maybe, doing laps around the castle yeah and some <laughs> his one's going to be very hard like, I, I imagine his sort of um calorie requirement being a marathon runner is probably through the roof and him being restricted is i don't yeah. know how that will it would be interesting to see what his but performance bodies is like. adapt don't they so like yeah. when you're on a res- I mean, it's only three weeks, but when you're on a restricted calorie diet, your body starts to adjust to the calories. So if you notice that if you go a whole day without eating, um, but you're not doing anything, you're literally sat at a computer or a desk, you won't feel that hungry because you haven't done anything to burn many calories. Mm. Whereas if you were running around all day, you're walking, you're moving, you're running, you're doing lots of activities and you're being very physical. By the time, let's say you did 10,000 steps by the time you got to lunchtime and you haven't eaten yet, you will still, you'll be You'd quite still, hungry mm. because you've burnt a significant amount of calories. Your, your body will tell you, you know, you, you've burnt energy, you need to eat energy now, take in energy. And we all know that, well, most people know to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit, which is more calories, um, sorry, less calories in than are going out. And that's what the people who are in the jungle are doing. And that's how they're losing weight. Nothing to do with the rice and beans. And that's what the article explained. Mm. So I thought today's episode, because a lot of people lo- you know, are interested in finding out how people are losing weight, we could discuss how people are losing weight, which is a calorie deficit. Mm-hmm. But a calorie deficit in itself is, is easy to understand. You eat less food, you move more. Mm. But it's very hard to stick to. Because if everyone Definitely. could stick to it, then everyone would be successful at losing weight and mm-hmm. also keeping it off. So today's podcast, what I thought we could discuss is how do you stay in a calorie deficit? How do you make it easier for yourself to stick to a deficit? And um, do you have any tips, anything you'd like to share? And I thought rather than just saying, oh, you know, we should stick to a calorie deficit. In what order of importance should we be just sticking to a calorie deficit? So, like, what things should be following to stick to a calorie deficit in order of importance? So, um, what do you guys think is the first and foremost thing? I think we all probably agree on it, but what do you guys think is the the number one thing that anyone who's trying to lose weight, getting into a calorie deficit, should do first? So, the first one, obviously, by default, is be in a calorie deficit. So, if you're starting off the top, want to lose weight, that's, like, the first, first principle I think we're all agreed on right yeah yeah so how what i mean is how do you get into that calorie deficit how can you make sure you're in that calorie deficit in the first place because you can't just go no exactly and guess yeah so using things like tracking apps so um what obviously we use quite often with our members and ourselves is something called my fitness pal so something where you can actually log your food keep a food diary and it gives you a guideline of how much you're eating so you need to know if you want to get in a calorie deficit you need somewhere to start and tracking your food i think is one of the best ways yeah definitely i agree so one number one would definitely be not just tracking a method of control is what i would say yeah because yeah that's tracking is one method of control and you could do yeah. what, what like there are other ways if you don't want to track your calories that you can um be in a calorie deficit and one one could literally be rule-based eating so if you eat three meals a day and you stay the same weight all the time you could reduce that to two meals a day, for example, mm-hmm. and be in a calorie deficit. Yeah. And that could be your your method of control or method of measure. Same way with like, say you decided that you're only going to have two protein-based meals and then one normal meal. And while maybe in a protein-based meal, it could be like I don't know, vegetables and I don't know, lean source of protein like a salad or like a stir fry or something like that. And that could be two meals that way. And then the final meal could be a normal meal and that could be your method of control. So some sort of method yeah. that is causing you to be in a calorie deficit that's measurable and recordable. That way you can like adjust it if you need yeah. to. Like you're not just guessing like today I think I was in a calorie deficit mm. like that. That's what I mean. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so if we're all in agreement of that, what would you say is number two 
once number one has been knocked out of the park, um, what would you say is the next thing that people should focus on to stay ne- in a calorie deficit? Your your food and the type of food choices that you're making. Um, so picking things that are aligned to your goals and are going to make it that little bit easier to stay within it. So I'm talking along the lines of ensuring like quote unquote good nutrition. So the things that you know that are good for you, fruit and veg, uh, salad, protein sources, uh, grains, pulses, all of those sort of good things there. So, you know, what would that fall under? Like food quality or ensuring yeah, that your just food diet choices, is right? Yeah. yeah, food choice. Yeah. And I, I don't want to gloss over this one because this one is really important. Aside from the number one, which is making sure you're in a calorie deficit, I think people overlook food choice or what you're eating quite often. And what I mean is, I don't mean just try to eat healthy food or clean or whatever. I'm talking more about like being mindful of what you eat to create it, to make it easier to stay in a calorie deficit. And what that means is the only way you can easily stay in a calorie deficit is not by trying not to feel hungry. So the, the thing that gets people out of a calorie deficit is normally hunger or the want for something that oh, yeah. they're not allowed to eat at the moment or yeah. they can't get fit into their diet. So like um, normally that's high calorie junk food. So to avoid eating high calorie junk food or overeating in general or giving into hunger, what I think Nikki was trying to say is pick foods that make you feel more satisfied and make you feel yeah. fuller for longer and fuller after you eat them. So when you say that, you, you kind of went through it quite quickly. But what th- what foods do you mean? So um, I would I would start and I think a general rule of thumb that we all sort of advocate is like filling up your plates, pick plate fillers. And they usually are things like vegetables so a nice rule is fill half your plate up with veggies at meal times and that just by adding that simple thing in you're already bulking up a lot of your meal whether you decide to track or not and it's actually a very good like non-tracking method as well just because mm. by default you're sort of when half of your plate is full of veggies you're almost reducing the portion size of the other things that you're filling your plate with so yeah plate fillers like that um fruits obviously through the day to snack on um if you were to go on comparison on like a calorie for calorie way um 100 calories of apple versus 100 calories of chocolate um there's a big volume difference or size difference between the two so when you say volume difference do you mind just calorie um clarifying what you mean yeah so uh literally a size difference so think about an apple an average apple i think is around 100 calories or so maybe a little bit less um and then it weighs about 100 grams yeah um 100 calories of chocolate uh probably weighs about 20 grams i think from off the top of my head like two two squares of dark chocolate is like 20 grams and that's around about 100 or just a little bit over 100 calories and that's literally that in size um yeah, so there's a big difference think, there. And I that's gonna say, the difference on how it fills up in your stomach as well. So think yeah, about the space of the apple. The yeah. Volume, yeah. yeah, think about the space that the apple will take in your stomach compared to two squares of chocolate, for example. So yeah, just picking um, things that are sort of going to fill you up first. Not, not that you can't have the chocolate, um, but just sort of go for those things first and then fit in the little bits later. I think it's more satisfying, sorry, satisfying to look at as well. You know, like when you look at a meal, when you can bulk out the meal and there's lots of salad and you really bulk it out, visually it's more appealing rather than just having a smaller meal that's probably a lot lot higher in calories as well. Yeah. Oh, 100%. It's almost you're giving yourself the self-reward. You're like, yes, I just put together a really nice, healthy looking meal almost. Um, Yeah. yeah. I I definitely get that when I look at it sometimes. I pat on the back sort of thing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i think um anyone who struggles to be stay in a calorie deficit is not following this principle of food volume of maximizing the amount of food you can on a plate for the lowest amount of calories basically mm. so like a good example of that will be something like literally like nickel said about the apple and chocolate but even better than maybe that would be the vegetable example yeah true so if you think like 
a hundred calories of vegetables is quite a lot. a lot. Like you'd have to have like lots of peppers, lots of broccoli, lots, especially green um, leafy veg like that. There's, you can have a lot, like a whole bag of spinach. I'm not sure on the calories, but probably about 30 calories. Yeah. Mm. And that, that's a whole bag of a kilo of, of spinach. I don't know when you cook it, it goes into nothing. But like if you were having like raw spinach in a salad instead of lettuce, for example, um, or like a packet of crisps on the side of your sandwich, having like a big bulky salad may not be as appealing, as tasty as the crisps. And that's where seasonings come in because people just think to eat healthily, you can't add seasonings and stuff. Remember, seasonings, depending on what you use, are very low in calories if you're mm. not going for sauces and more herbs and spices. Mm. Um, but that volume of eating and making sure 80% of your food intake out of your calories. So if you're having, no one should be eating as little as a thousand calories a day. But if you were, for easy maths, if you were doing um, a thousand calories, 800 of those calories should come from whole nutritious sources of food like the vegetables that Nico was explaining. What's another good food choice then to help you feel satisfied aside from um, nutrient dense food like vegetables and stuff that fill you up? Protein is another good one. So try and have protein at all main meals. That's really satisfying. So along with the kind of vegetables and fruit and those things, having an, enough protein and probably like in every main meal, trying to have enough protein as well, um, really keeps you satisfied. And then you're less likely to want to overeat and have and pick on food after as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Protein helps fill you up for longer. Yeah. And also protein there's a thermic effect of burning food. So what I mean by that is that when you digest food, it burns calories. Mm -hmm. Any process your body goes through burns calories. Um, and protein requires the most amount of calories to break down in terms of like when you're digesting it. So there's a greater effect of like, it's only a small percentage. It's not going to make a huge difference. I'm not saying if all your calories came from protein is the way to go, but I mean, even then there's a there's a better choice it's a better choice for trying to lose weight yeah mm. that's why people get meat sweats isn't it if you have is that the reason <laughs> yeah yeah if you have like a, a barbecue or something like that yeah. or if you eat a lot of meat yeah well that's what it's down to apparently if you're a vegetarian or vegan don't, you're not don't gonna be alarmed <laughs> yeah we're not saying that you have to eat meat we're talking about protein here. So yeah. obviously most common example of easy way of getting pro protein will be lean sources of meat and things like, you know, lean fish and chicken and things like that. But you can also do it through dairy products. I guess that's more for vegetarians, but for vegans, pulses, beans, and all these sorts of things that there's, there's many ways of getting in yeah. protein. Um, and even if you do want to go to a more processed source, like a protein shake, Again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's still a way of getting in protein. And it's also yeah. a good way to bulk out um, a meal um, in terms of like, say you're having a protein shake with a meal that's lower in protein. It will still have the, I, I know you're not chewing and you're not like kind of digesting it in that same way. And you're not going to have that um, satisfying feeling of eating something, but it will still have the effect of like f making you feel fuller for longer. Mm, yeah definitely so a low protein meal supplementing that with a protein shake is a great way to go as well um so that is food choice what would you say is i would argue that the one of the things that is is equally as important as food choice but um what would you say the next top thing in your kind of opinion is to for someone aside from like having a method of control and selecting good food choices so um. having some kind of like routine with the food that you're having so like i know when i was trying to stick to calories i was trying to make sure that not i ate the same thing every day but i had some form of routine and structure with what i was having so i knew roughly how many calories i was eating so if i wasn't tracking or i didn't have some form of method of control that day i roughly knew how much i was eating because i'd had structure and routine from what i was having before so I think that's quite important. Why do you feel routine and structure are so important? Because it gives you 
like it helps you kind of stay on track like me going for my kind of personal experience with calories and what we've seen with members like when you know kind of what you're eating the next day it's easier to stay on track like rather than waking up in the morning if you have routine of what you're going to have that day and structure of okay this is what my breakfast is going to be this is what my lunch is going to be i find it easier to stay on track and stick to your calories i think it comes down to decision fatigue so yeah. often a lot of people where they go wrong um and where where like diets kind of not diets when i just to um to clear things up like When I say diets I mean literally the food you're eating I don't mean like a mm. a, a restrictive Fact, diet yeah in a bad way I I just mean your nutrition almost so the way people mess up when they are trying to be in a calorie deficit is because they often like oh, I don't know what to eat I'm just going to eat this or yeah. Yeah, let me just get yeah. a takeaway today because I, I don't know what to make or like mm. what should I eat today like often people ask for a meal plan rather than guidance with nutrition because they want to be told what to eat because yeah. it's easy to follow something than it is to think for yourself so mm-hmm. that's what i mean by decision fatigue taking away the thinking so if mm. you have things ready like or you even have a plan ready like literally yesterday on there's a chalkboard beside me we wrote what we're going to do for food this week yeah as a family um and and i'm not saying it was healthy food or anything but just having an idea of what we're cooking gives us the the always mental relaxation of when it comes at night oh yeah. what are we making today yeah so and you can always chop and change it and yeah things yeah. happen in life and you know you might decide i don't know when you go shopping there wasn't the potatoes that you wanted for that jacket potato and you decide to get something else or whatever and it's fine life happens but i think yeah having a mm. plan always makes it a lot easier mm. you sort of yeah. prevent yourself getting to that point where you're like you're getting hungry you're getting hungry you keep asking yourself what shall i eat what shall i eat and then you turn to fuck it i'll just, just order a pizza yeah. yeah 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 this decision then is normally not the decision you want isn't it like i know what i'm like i walk around looking in the fridge and then i end up going for something probably unhealthy whereas if i had something just ready and prepared it would have probably been the better option for me in the first place yeah it's it's just I think what it comes down to is having like a le- basically a, a minimal chance of like failing mm. like, less chance of like coming to a point where you're like oh I'm gonna, I'm going to rely on like my willpower to do something. Mm. Now when you're hungry and you're relying on like oh like I should just make this really healthy meal but I really want to just chill out and go to bed. If you depend on it too much what's going to happen is that that's going to literally go make it everything go the, the more more room for error is what i'm trying to get at. yeah whereas if you have like a plan of action and structure and routine and stuff it's it's very easy to just to follow the plan and that's why i mm-hmm. think that's equally as important as food choice because let's say you did this one first you did the routine and you didn't give a shit about what you're going to eat um you were going to eat let's say you were going to eat um I don't know chocolate bars all day. Because you know you're going to be eating chocolate bars all day and you've got it down in terms of it it fits in with your calories. You're still more likely to succeed. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah, if yeah. if you didn't have that in place, uh you wouldn't you would there's still even more room for error even though you don't have a great plan in the first place. So yeah, that that's what, and it, and it takes away the stress and I think that's where a lot of people get like it just becomes automated isn't it rather yeah. than like stressful and and painstaking and things like that that's why like just having a even if you're not pl- um you know making meals in advance and you're you're living like a bodybuilder out of Tupperware boxes and things like that, and that's not your thing you don't want to meal prep even though meal prep is recommended for some people it's still a great way to go just to write things down so that when it comes to that meal time there's no like if you're you know if you can just stick to the plan and make what you said you were going to make then it and then then it's a lot easier for you and there's a, a little less stress for you yeah mm. we like yeah. meticulously plan other aspects of our life but often like things like nutrition and the and what you're going to eat for the day and stuff like that often gets left out like you know meetings and stuff for work always get put into the diary um your children's like parents evenings and all of that all get put in but then sort of something something that you do every day which is eating and especially if you're trying to lose weight it doesn't so mm. having it written down or in front of you is 
Yeah. I think a lot of people use the excuse of like, oh, I, I like, I get bored of the same food all the time. Mm. Or like, I get, um, and I, I get it. Like, you know, I get it, but yeah. we, we eat food not just for like goals. Your, yeah. It's, yeah. It's we don't for we enjoyment, eat it for taste comfort, and enjoyment. Yeah, and your tongue is like yeah. a, I guess, like something that you get to experience pleasure from with the food side of things. So I, mm-hmm. I get the emotional side of it. Like, oh, you know, there should be an experience. But also at the same time, you have to look at the your other emotions that you may feel. So I'm not saying that everyone needs to lose weight. But if you are someone who feels pain when you don't like what you see and you, you know, you, you are feeling uncomfortable and it holds you back and your body is something that you're, you're not comfortable with and you know that losing a bit of weight would likely make you a bit more comfortable and it would make you healthier and you get enjoy benefits of that then you need to focus on that rather than the the pleasure you get from food if if that Mm. makes sense so what i mean by that is think about how you want to feel by sticking to a bit more of a mundane routine with food if you're eating the same breakfast for example every day for like four to six to eight weeks or whatever until you reach your goal then you can have a bit more flexibility again yeah whereas if you're almost saying like a way out risk versus benefits or not risk versus benefit but like which one do you prioritize like what are you what what is more discomfort for you is it to stay the same um and like not feel happy with the way you look in your body or is it to get pleasure from food and like maybe sacrifice it i'm not saying sacrifice taste because that's not what I'm saying, but sacrifice a little bit of flexibility in like, going, yeah. I'm going to have anything off the menu. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm only going to pick the healthier options off the menu. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. So from structure and routine, we kind of got into that one a little bit. What would you say is the next thing that is super important to um, make sure you stay within a calorie deficit? Enjoyment enjoyment <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no no I, I i agree so what, I what, what um yeah no I, I do mean it enjoyment so something that is okay being in a calorie deficit and sort of working towards goals there's always going to be a factor of um oh i'm on a diet or i'm trying to lose weight but you can make that enjoyable and it doesn't have to be this thing that is like the worst thing in the world sort of thing um yes you're probably going to go through times and i don't want to sugarcoat it and say you're going to be full all the times like if you just eat vegetables you're definitely going to be full all the time and you're not going to experience anything there are going to be times where you're going to be hungry and things but i think it's an to some extent an unnecessary evil that comes with dieting or sort of calorie reduction and there's definitely ways that you can manage it but definitely keeping it enjoyable and including the things that you love will be able for you to be allow you to stick to it in the long run 100 percent agree with that i I think earlier vinnie you mentioned about 80 percent of people's food should come from like wholesome nutritious foods well i think like what you're saying there nickel that 20 percent should be the foods that you enjoy and the the things that you like and i think it's important to include a little bit of that remember we said 20 percent. it's not a lot but it's enough to make your diet Mm. enjoyable and it doesn't have to be 20 percent across the day so it doesn't have to be like i'll save 80 percent of for healthy food and 20% for un, like whatever you fancied. I don't mean unhealthy food, but whatever you want on that day. You can do it that way. So if you had 2,000 calories a day, 1,600 could be from only like healthy food. And then 400 could be from, I don't know, ice like cream. more. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 like ice cream, 400 calories of ice cream. Yeah. You could do it like that. But or it could literally be across the week yeah you know what yeah. i mean could be like you two could takeaways save or something like that 20 percent yeah. of your week for like a takeaway like nikki was saying and and you could do it like that and it, mm. it's totally up to you but even a better way than to breaking it down from healthy food that doesn't taste nice to junk food that you love the taste of why not make your healthy food just taste as nice yeah do you know yeah. what i mean like pe- people think that are oh, like just because something like when you think diet what do you think? Salad, yeah, boring well, food. Yeah, yeah bland, you think like, you think yeah, like bland. bland is, yeah. yeah. And that's not what it has to be. Like, think about like, right, one number one food that like a lot of people like is Indian food, like curries, 
things like that. But they, they associate it with it being like unhealthy and oily and greasy. Maybe the restaurants cook it like that. But at home, you control the amount of oil you use. You control whether you put full fat yogurt on a on a marinade or um, low fat. You control mm. um, what types of food are going into the into the curry. Like, are you removing the potatoes, leaving them in? Are you putting more vegetables instead of something else, instead of carb sauce? Are you, what carb sauce are you using? Are you using lentils? Are you using something else? These are all things that you get to decide. You get to choose the flavors. Are usually the lowest calorie thing on the in the in the the pot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The the spices, the vegetables, the things that actually add majority of the flavors, um, aside from oil and fat, <laughs> is the some of the tastiest things that are the lowest in calories. Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can make a meal taste amazing if you're smart about it. Um, Unless you cook bland food like me. <laughs> 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 but that's okay that's enjoyable for you though right i mean no nah, that's she's lazy with cooking oh, that's right. lazy. <laughs> she's like whatever's convenient and quick and fast yeah but at the end of the day i know like it sounds silly but when i was like trying to lose weight and stuff that worked for me so it might not work for someone else having bland food and boring food but it worked for me for that yeah. time so see i'm the opposite so like i yeah. went the opposite route of what do i love eating let me include that in my um nutrition yeah but I'll make them healthier. So like we we like you know, I don't know. One of the things that we were uh, was a staple was like we like the f- flavor of buffalo chicken. So obviously chicken wings and f- deep fried food is not gonna be something that you can eat every week and regularly if you're trying to stay in a calorie deficit. Unless you're like um, some elite level athlete who burns like five thousand calories a day. And again, even for your health, it's probably not the best thing to eat every day. <laughs> but so what we did was like we got flatbreads, marinated chicken, and um, like chicken breast in buffalo sauce. The buffalo sauce that we got was pretty low in calories. Just be mindful of how much you use. And then the rest of it was vegetables on the flatbread and mm. um, a bit of melted cheese. And it was like almost like a pizza flatbread thingy. And that was like a regular thing we ate every week that was under... Like, I think three flatbreads with chicken on top. Every, everything was under 500 calories with a side salad and stuff. So it was a very easy meal to fit in mm. every single week and feel satisfied and, and not miss the, the taste of that yeah. buffalo chicken. Yeah. Even though, like, you know, it's obviously a lot better, like, having deep fried. But we got the crispiness from the the frat, flatbreads that were put under a grill kind of thing. So yeah. it's, it's about being like strategic with the food choices as well like we've already gone through that one but taste you can really keep tasting is what i'm trying to get out <laughs> um what else what would you say is the next most important thing to that where, where most people fall off what would you say can we just do a quick recap? What have we already said? Sorry. So we've gone. Number one was um, a method of control. Yeah, method. So we said things like counting calories, um, having rules, things like that. Something to control your food intake. Then equally important, we kind of went through food choice. So the types of food that you're eating to maximize um, the the amount of food that you can put on a plate and also not feel go hungry by and also structure and routine so that it's less likely for you to fall off the plan. And then we said the next important thing was having food choice. I mean, um, keeping things that you enjoy within yeah. your diet. Mm. So I wrote down flexibility, but that's what I meant by that. So mm-hmm. having the flexibility to kind of eat what you want and not just be restricted to bland food. So, yeah. So those are the, the things we've gone through so far. Those are four things. Anything else that you guys... And I'm not talking about tips and stuff, but I mean like general big things that will help you stay in a calorie deficit. All right, because I don't want silence on the podcast. <laughs> I'm going to go for, with one that I've got I can't on my think mind. Of one. So, okay, go on. one thing that I find people often fall off with, and something that we help, me and Nikhil help people with a lot and put a big emphasis on when it comes to helping people with nutrition, is avoiding and managing triggers. Oh, yeah. 
So a lot of people find where they, if they're doing all of the things right, like they're tracking, they're, they're trying to do that, they've got their structure and routine in place, they've got their food choices down, they 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 have got flexibility, and then something happens that makes yeah, them just fall can, off the rails. So it can what as we, well. yeah, and what I would say is identify what those things potentially are for you. So in advance, before you start with the nutrition, before you do anything, think about what potentially will knock you off plan. For most people, it's going to be things like going out to eat. Um, they're, they're normal foods that they snack on mindlessly, like biscuits or crisps or things like that. Or when is it normally that you normally fall out of whack? Is it when you've had a stressful day? Is it when you walk past a donut shop? Is it when you have to go out for a meeting with people and there's drinks involved? What is it for you? Is it watching TV? Identify it. So that's your trigger. What is causing you to do it? And then what happens when that happens as well? So like mm-hmm. for some people, they might find that it's when they're working from home and then in the kitchen and they're like, they just randomly go and get a biscuit every five minutes. So what's causing you to go get the biscuit? Is it because the biscuit jar is out on the counter? Is it because you're having stress at work? What What's actually causing you to, causing the trigger and then what's making you, what's the cause of the trigger? Because then you can change it. So what happens is you can either avoid the trigger altogether, which is like, let's say, for example, if it was an easy one, like walking past the donut shop, you could take a different route to work. You can walk another way. You don't have to smell the donuts and the trigger is totally avoided and you never get triggered to go get a donut. Mm. If it's not like that, if it's watching TV and that's not something you want to get rid of, then you need to replace the trigger. Like you need to replace, not replace the trigger, sorry. You need to replace the behavior that happens yeah. because of the trigger. So if watching tri- TV causes you to go and get a snack, what you need to control is maybe control what snack you go get. Pick something that maybe fits into your nutrition. Or instead of maybe going to to have a, to have a snack, maybe do something else while you're watching TV. Mm-hmm. So... The crazy bunch of us may sit on a bicycle and watch TV that way, <laughs> um, jog on the spot. Or you may go get a drink, a low calorie drink, instead of having a high calorie snack or a low calorie snack or a piece of fruit or something like that. Or you set a limit in terms of like, you know, if you know you can control yourself, but like you're only going to have one crisp packet, no more. Mm. But you need to know yourself for, to do that. Like me, I can't have one crisp packet. I will finish the bag and then go want more so i avoid crisps altogether and what i mean by crisps to american listeners um is potato chips chips. (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um i cannot eat them so um that's it they Mm, just that's like me yeah Yeah. so i replace them with popcorn because i can control myself with popcorn and um if i set a portion size i know i'll stick to that portion size so that's that's what i'm talking about um and it could be anything. Like, so some people, it's a cup of tea. They usually have a biscuit with a cup of tea. So either avoid the cup of tea or change the behavior. Mm. Like, what's going to give you pleasure while having a cup of tea? Instead of, like, having a sweet side, why don't you add sweetener, which is lower in calories, to the cup of tea? So you, you don't have to have a biscuit with it for your sweet mm. um, loop craving. Or choose something slightly different or portion control or whatever it is. So I think avoiding or managing your triggers is is, is a really big one. Anything you'd like really to add big. to that, Nikhil, because that's something you cover in a lot of depth when it comes to um, the people we help and uh, on Beyond the Diet. Yeah, it's no, no, you've covered it really, really well. And I agree with everything that you're saying. So yeah, identifying the trigger um, or identifying the cue and then the trigger and then the behavior that you know you have with it. So stress, um, stress is, I think stress is one that is big like um we live in a very stressful society in a stressful world and often people will sort of turn to food for that instant bit of gratification and comfort um but sometimes we need to also get comfortable with our feelings and accept them as well so something that i read over the weekend like you learn to accept the stress that you're having but manage it in a different way and don't think that sort of turning to having a high calorie snack and that will take away the problems of it but you could do something more positive like texting a loved one i think is what we tell people sometimes or sending a positive message and stuff like that so so yeah just replacing those triggers 
Uh, you've kind of got me to think something totally off um, topic a little bit, actually, a little bit off topic about stress. It, there's a YouTube video by, it was a TED talk mm -hmm. on stress. And um, it was, I, th I think she was, I think it was actually stress and ang slash anxiety. So it was like um, changing your perception of stress and anxiety. So most people see it as a bad thing. And what she was trying to explain was, why we feel it and why it's a good response, not a negative response. Mm. It's actually something that we should be feeling. And there's a, and if you just change your perception of stress, um, it will actually improve your handling of it. And it's not just like mentally, it's physiologically as well. So like, I think a th I don't want to give stats off the top of my head when I don't know them and I don't remember them, but, I literally think there was things like, uh, like people had less fatalities because of stress. They perceived stress more positively and had a positive impact on their health mm, okay. simply by changing their mindset of like, mm. rather than thinking worry, like say you had um, an exam coming up and you're like, oh, I've got this exam and I'm feeling stressed and I'm feeling anxious. And um, changing that to like, I've got this exam and the reason why I'm feeling this is nervousness yeah. is, is trying to prep me and prepare me to feel ready for this. So the reason why I'm feeling nervous is because I'm about to do something that's important to me. So I should be mm. prepared for it. I should, you know, do some revision or do some studying and perceiving that in that way, even though it's just a little mental flick, it's like yeah. your body's trying to prepare you for that. And what it does is... um. The lady explains it a lot better than I do, but I would definitely go watch that video if, if stress is one that you struggle with to control because just changing your mindset of it without may help you control how you react to it. So it may stop you from turning to food, for example, is the reason why I'm bringing that up. So I think those are some of the top ones covered. Is there anything else that you would add to that? So we've, we've gone through five, I believe. So and method hydration. Of yeah, so hydration, I, I definitely think is 100% important. I think yeah, it comes into food selection, but I think it should be a category on its mm. own and maybe even yeah. quite a high up. Like it's, it's probably like one that's equally as important as food choice. Yeah, um, I definitely think, I definitely think people I think. don't. Yeah, exactly. And like we say all the time, a lot of people mistake thirst for hunger and then they end up snacking and eating. But sometimes all you need to do is drink and rehydrate so um, yeah i think drinking enough and being um and hydration is a really important one actually nico anything you'd add to hydration side of things of why it's important yeah like again what uh, sadie said um humans were built up of water as well and i think just as a probably a population we probably all don't drink as much as we should um again just leading back to the busyness of things or i forgot to do this again turning to other things for like quick hits um uh, maybe you'd like favor a sugary drink over water and things like that whereas the wa water should really be at the forefront mm. but um from because we're talking about fat loss and weight loss but fr from that perspective definitely to do with the sort of managing sort of cravings controlling thirst and even satiation to a point like having water fills up your stomach so going back to that sort mm. of volume aspect of it it fills up your stomach temporarily obviously it'll pass through pretty quickly but that craving that you had top it up with water first um it will fill up your stomach for a short period mm. of time and it may be enough time to sort of ride the wave of that craving so so yeah i think um one that's often overlooked aside from feeling full and um, like stopping cravings and hunger and stuff like that, which is obviously super important. But with water, it's energy. Mm. So it affects your metabolism directly. So directly in the sense that you actually have a faster metabolism if you're hydrated. So your, your body functions normally only by a small amount, but you actually, there's a thermic a a effect of drinking water. So mm -hmm. like, processing water through your body burns calories very small amount but it burns more calories than if you weren't drinking any water yeah so obviously there's a limit to that don't just go drinking loads of water because you know you, you shouldn't have too much water 
if you have like really excessive amounts of water it can be toxic to your body um and um but at the same time there's a negative effect of not having enough water so what happens is the metabolism slows down but not slows down that your metabolism actually just shuts down i mean you are less energetic you don't move as much when you're dehydrated you don't you tend to like take less steps you tend to feel more lethargic you tend to sit down a bit more you tend to feel hungrier you tend to do all these things that mm. have a negative effect on your performance your energy your movement so if you're hydrated you're more likely to feel energetic you're more likely to feel you know people Me like cool. have yeah like you know you, you obviously coffee gives you like a boost in the morning but water can have a similar effect i'm not talking about the same effect because obviously caffeine is its own yeah crazy elixir of life but water <laughs> is its own elixir of life if you have enough water yeah. you feel hydrated you look good you feel good you feel well you tend to move more all these benefits that are looked aside from and even just like think about your joints uh, this is not obviously going to help with calorie deficit but actually it could because if you feel shit and you feel achy and you feel weak and you're not going to do things like exercise yeah. and stuff like that which yeah. definitely has an effect on your metabolism and your total calories burnt for the day so forget the nutrition side of things burning more calories makes you be in a bigger deficit do you get what i mean so let's say you burn 200 calories for a workout you're in a 200 calorie bigger deficit than you would have been if yeah. you didn't do that 200 calorie workout and obviously working out there's loads of benefits of working out aside from burning calories that's like the 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 one that should be last on the list when you exercise but that being said like you want to exercise for what, if it is for that reason if you are feeling achy and you're feeling weak and your joints are aching and you're hurting um then you know you're not going to want to do it and one way of feeling if you if you have obviously injuries and stuff that's different but if you if your joints are not hydrated your your spine is not hydrated the discs are not hydrated you're not going to feel good mm-hmm. mm. So what we always say to people before they start exercise is to have a glass of water because you're able to work out harder you're able to give more during the workout you have more energy have more perf- an improved performance meaning you'll burn a lot of calories in that workout you'll you'll be able to train more you'll be able to train for longer you'll feel better in that workout you're going to give it more energy you're not going to feel as achy your back's not going to feel as sore all these things are going to you know happen so that's, that's that's another reason why water is so important and um talking about movement i think one big thing that we often forget to talk about because we focus so much on a calorie deficit point of view is food because obviously it's a lot more easier to control the amount of calories you take in than it is the amount to burn because that's largely dependent on things you don't control it it is the the effect of movement so yeah. the more you walk in the day the more steps you take the more movement you make the more you work out the more you exercise they all burn calories mm-hmm. and that can help you control your calorie deficit from the point of both because you burnt more calories but also also most people find that they stay on track more when they move more Yeah. So what I mean by that is you have like a a bit of a yin and yang relationship with food with exercise. So most people find when they exercise and they're training and they're, they're working out and they're doing it regularly they're more motivated to stick to nutrition. Mm-hmm. When they're not and they're being lazy and they're being rubbish with their food they're often like uh what's the point I'm not even working out anyway I might as well eat yeah. crap. So that's what I mean by that like kind of there's almost like an inverse relationship. No sorry. Yeah, I see that not a an lot. inverse relationship it's the same relationship. Yeah. Like when you have that, a poor relationship, yeah, other. yeah, they go yeah. hand in hand, yeah. So that's one thing, like, an, like the the seventh one that we'd yeah. say is is looking at focusing on movement as well. So I think that's most of them covered. Is there anything that you would add to all of those? I'd say a, like an overarching factor, and like one that sort of just ties all of them in. Like the advice would be useless if you know you don't adhere to it so it's all well and good applying it you know maybe a few days a week and doing this but if then suddenly you can't adhere to it 
you're not going to see the results that you want and likewise patience as well like adherence and patience they both sort of like you could tie mm. it up they it's sort of the overarching factor in is needed alongside all of those seven things yeah yeah so like you know like three weeks of it extreme fat loss on like you know i'm a celebrity get me out of here kind of how we started this off thing it's not gonna get you to where you want to be mm. so like if you're trying to lose a significant amount of weight you have to give it some time that like you have to put in the work put in the hours put in the the weeks and months and let that fat loss happen and stay in a calorie deficit long enough for you to see decent results and i think that is the whole point of this episode is basically how can you stay in a calorie deficit for long enough so if you implement all of these tips that we're giving you or key points um if you kind of adhere to these principles then you're very likely to be able to stick to this long term but if you don't and you miss out even just one of those think of it as like the time you're able to stick to a calorie deficit will be less and less and less yeah yeah like yeah, just agree. picking one of those may make take you two to two weeks picking two of those may make take you three to four weeks for example like that so the more you do the more you'll be able to stick to this for longer is there any tips that you want to add to like because Sadie I know you were talking about more specific tips but is there any tips that you guys would give to someone who is trying to stay in a calorie deficit like um, one for example I'll use um, just to give you guys an idea of what I mean is I cut up my food into smaller portions <laughs> like no. a little child <laughs> so uh, when I say smaller portions I mean literally smaller sizes so rather than cutting a sandwich in half I cut it into four little triangles like a little baby little <laughs> school kid because then it makes it forces me to slow down and take more bites and slow down like I have to pick up four bits of food slowly eat it and that sort of thing mm. whereas if I cut it into two bits like two big pieces of food I just eat it two, two things and one you know it stays in my hand yeah, the whole gone. time and I eat it and it's yeah. gone faster the other reason is visually it looks like there's more food on the plate like I can just separate a little bit I keep hitting my mic sorry I, I can separate the food a little bit and um, it makes it look like there's a bit more food visually on the plate which makes more me appealing. feel like yeah I'm eating a bigger meal than I am anything else so you guys would add to that and sometimes just by like using smaller plates and bowls and stuff for your food so like sometimes having like side plates or smaller plates for your meals you're less likely to have a bigger portion if the actual plate or the bowl that you're using is smaller so that's quite a good tip especially if you're trying to control how much you're eating as well again it visually uh, it makes it look like there's more food on the plate yeah exactly exactly and like being mindful of when you're eating so like slowing down like when you're eating and not like being distracted when you're eating so the more you think about what you're actually doing you're less likely to again like how many of us watch tv and keep eating keep eating keep, keep eating like just focus on what you're doing and slow down with eating and stuff like that can control how much you're having as well mm. yeah not eating in front of the tv is actually a good mm, yeah. one because yeah, it causes you to be mindful yeah and yeah, sometimes you want to eat for the duration of the TV show that you're look you're watching. Mm. Yeah, so, so like you get more food. Yeah, so you get more food. Yeah, so so that's a good one. Um, yeah, taking your time is a good one as well. Chewing your food, like at the start, you could like even potentially set yourself a little timer and say, no, I'm going to make this meal last like at least ten minutes rather than like three minutes and then get back to work or whatever. Like, no, mm. I'm going to sort of sit down, take ten minutes for it. And just eating so just allows your body to process like when mm. you're full and when you're when you're hungry and things like that. So if you're still hungry after, you know, the 10 minutes or if you're feeling satiated and satisfied. I think you gave a really good one on your stories the other day, I think, Nikhil, um, about smaller spoon. Oh, yeah. I always use a smaller spoon nowadays. Same. Yeah. So like if I'm eating things like um, yogurt or cereal, even um, just yeah, using a smaller spoon is a good one. Yeah, because it makes you slow down automatically because mm -hmm. you get uh, yeah. food in the spoon and i'm like i'm notorious for that i don't know if you are as well vin like just hoovering food down like in the past <laughs> i would just like literally do, 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 done mm. and yeah it, it's not i've good. gone to the extreme now man i even cut my pizza into smaller sl so like oh, say really? on a normal pizza you get eight slices i will turn it into 16 slice pizza yeah so it forces me to slow down like kind of eat that enjoy it a little bit longer helps me Staying like into like 
the like basically enjoying the food for and those are all like sort of um tips on forming better relationships with food it's sort of going outside of the realm of just like tracking your calories and eating towards calories you're sort of training yourself almost to sustain your relationship with food and yeah like the things that you want to do when you're trying to maintain your weight almost as well yeah because it's all good staying in a calorie deficit for eight weeks getting really good results and then rebounding back to old habits yeah it doesn't le- you don't learn anything you don't teach yourself anything yeah and it, it's important for you to build good relationships for a long period of time and then when you come away from let's say some of these methods of control and like what i mean is method of control of controlling calories but you keep the other habits that you've built up like food choice structure routine hydration all these things that we spoke about to today all of those things you're still able to implement yeah. if you just turn it all off what's going to happen you're going to go back to your old habits and that that's just not gonna work yeah it's It's like um i I read a a really good quote rather than thinking of it as a um on off switch think of as a dimmer switch where sometimes you sort of you know dim it down a bit where you want to have it relaxed a little bit but then you can turn up the intensity and get a little bit stricter with your diet and other times you like you know turn it down a bit but you still maintain all of the good habits rather than sort of being right i'm either on it or completely off of it Mm. yeah I've heard that one before as well. Um, any other kind of um, tips you guys have to offer? No, I'm pretty much... No, not much else from me. Well, I will speak for Sadie then because she sent some oh, before that she hasn't mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, I can't I remember saying. what I said. <laughs> That's what I I've got it in front of me. So Sadie before, so I won't take credit, Sadie said, um, which is a really good one, is not to drink your calories. So oh, um, yeah. what she means by that is like, potentially things like alcohol and stuff but also more so than alcohol she probably means um what do you want to say rather than me talk for you i'm thinking more of things like um full fat cokes orange juice like all these kind of things that you don't really think about you might have a can of coke but the amount of calories that you're going to consume whereas if you just swap to like a coke zero or like you don't realize that even in things like um a lot of people have smoothies but then they put in loads and loads of different things in that smoothie and don't realize how many calories are actually in that mm. one thing and and you think oh this is a healthy kind of breakfast it, which it could be but the amount of calories you're having is a lot yeah. um so yeah being aware of those sort of things and the liquids that you're having and and things from drinks um, calories can easily creep up from those mm. things because you could still eat a healthy diet like Sadie's just I know she's talked about the, the, the drinking calories but she said something that made me think about you can eat a healthy diet but still be eating a large amount of calories that can yeah. cause you to gain weight that's why like mm. if, if you're eating a very healthy diet you could still potentially gain weight if you're not managing that ca- the calories that's why we calories. said that's the number one thing before anything yeah. else mm. um, another thing Sadie just said which um I was a bit like, what? Uh, while it was a really good point, what the hell is full fat Coke? Oh, like, you know what I mean? Just a Coke, yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? And loads of people, everyone says. I just say yeah. that. Like, I just say Everyone I don't says it like full that. fat Coke, yeah. and there's no fat content in Coke. It's sugar. It's, so- it's like a, low, a full sugar Coke and a, lo- a low sugar Coke. Or it's like yeah, from sorry. milk in it. It's no, no, no. I, I, I'm not. I, I, I'm you know just messing around. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you meant. And just being an asshole. Um, but yeah, everyone says that. Everyone says that. It always like, whenever say, they say it, I'm like, do you I just want to tell them and correct them or do yeah. I just <laughs> let it go? Be a dickhead and correct them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I know what you wanted to say there. You wanted to call me one. Um, oh, and one actual point you actually brought up was about trigger foods. We've gone through it and I think I said it anyway, but just in case I didn't, because it's a really good one to use it we said it on like two episodes ago on a podcast i think about trigger foods anything that keeps um that forces you to eat it like biscuits out on the side put it away mm. such an easy way of controlling things that t- trigger you out of sight out of mind yeah put it away in a cupboard somewhere that doesn't force you to keep eating it um yeah any other things that you would add to what we've had to say <laughs> I didn't have anything else on my list, did I? <laughs> <laughs> no, you went through everything else. Okay, good. <laughs> Liko, anything you'd like to add to closing off the um, nutrition guru out of all of us? No, but we've covered it. We've, we've nailed it. I think we've got this one down. One thing we haven't said is 
information is great, but implementation is even better. Yeah. So all of this information, if you're someone who is like me, who loves to listen to podcasts and take in lots of information, but then doesn't normally always take action on everything they learn, then that is potentially where you're not, where you're going to go wrong with all of this. Mm. You, the number one thing out of all of this before, like after you do learn all of this, sorry, is you need to now take action. If you just Mm. know the things that you should be doing, but don't do them, nothing's going to happen. So either go away and do it yourself or a little plug now is if you're someone who struggles to take action on their own, me and Nikhil, would be it'd be a sin for us not to mention it if we didn't if you know something that we literally go through is we started something called beyond the diet and we offer all of this stuff that we've just spoken about we do it over the course of a challenge so we do start anyone who wants to join gets on board of our nutrition challenge usually between six and eight weeks and and we get you to go through all of these things in a structured routine way with our support, with the, the support of other people who are doing it with you, so that you are forced into taking action. And it literally, basically, you don't do it on your own. You just, are, because of the accountability and because you're in a group, because you've paid some money, you've got involved, you've put, you know, you've got skin in the game, you're actually yeah. doing what we're asking you to do in a structured routine way with support, with step-by-step actions that are easy to implement. So if you'd like to get involved, you'd like to learn more, we are actually closed at the moment. We're not taking anyone on. But in January, we will be starting a new intake of a new set of people that will be helping on our next challenge. So if you're interested in that, go over to beyondadiet.co.uk or .com and register your interest and you will be able to basically find out a bit more information of when our next challenges become available. So go ahead and do that. I know I ended it with a plug, but I feel like it would be <laughs> irresponsible of me not to plug if you want some help <laughs> and you can't do this on your own. So if you're looking for some help, make sure you check that out. Excellent. Anything you guys like to add to that? No, no that's You've it for me. It. That was a good wrap up. All right, closing. We will catch you on the next episode. If you enjoyed that one, please leave us a review. It really helps us out massively. If you have any questions, anything you'd like us to talk about in the next episode, send us an email at podcast at bodybeyond.co.uk. And if you want to be a guest on this podcast, then send us an email through on there too. <laughs> Otherwise, we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you for listening. Over and out, guys. Thanks. Bye. See ya.